Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to be doing a quick walkthrough for the Week 1 Lab 2 for ISSC 421 using Wireshark and NetWitness Investigator to analyze wireless traffic. In this demonstration, I'll be walking through Section 2, Part 1, Analyze Wireless Traffic with Wireshark. In step three, we are to open the hotspot capture.pcapng file. Now, to do this, I'm just going to go to File. I'm going to go to Open. And inside of the ISSA underscore tools folder, I'm going to double click on the hotspot capture pcapng file. Step number four. In the frame summary pane, select frame seven. Here we have frame seven. You can drag the frame borders to change the view of your data at any time. You can expand each line in the frame details pane by clicking the arrow at the beginning of each line. In the Wireshark window, adjust the top border of the frame details pane to show only frames 7 through 9 in the frame summary pane. Now to do this, I'm just going to go on over here and I'm just going to scroll on up until I have just frame 7 eight and nine showing and I'll do this by pulling this window up to show just those three frames. Step number six in the frame details pane review the protocol list to identify the different protocols used in frame seven. So here we have frame seven and if you look down here in the details pane we have a number of protocols starting here with PPP going all the way down to the PPP link control protocol. Step 7. Make a screen capture showing all the protocols used in frame 7 and paste it into your lab report file. In the frame details pane, expand the Ethernet 2 line. That would be right here. There's the arrow. Let's go ahead and expand that. In the frame details pane, expand the destination line to identify the MAC address and the connection type. This would be located here. Let's go ahead and expand that. Here we see the MAC addresses shown to us in parentheses. Here's one here. There's another MAC address and there's another MAC address. Step number 10. In the frame details pane, expand the source line to identify the MAC address and the connection type. And that would be located right here. In the frame details pane, expand the user datagram protocol line to identify the source port used in the communication. So that would be located here. Go ahead and expand that. Let's scroll down. And you can see that the source port is port 1701. In the frame summary pane, select frame 18, then select the source port number used in the user datagram protocol communication. Now we can either scroll on down until we come to frame 18 in the frame summary pane or we can go to go and I can go to packet and I can just type in 18 and I can push to go to packet and there we have line 18 presented to us. And then underneath the user datagram protocol communication for line 18 we can look at the source port as being port 65388. Step 13, make a screen capture showing the source port number used in frame 18 and paste it into your lab report file. In the frames details pane, expand the domain name system query line. Then expand the queries line to identify the domain queried. So we're gonna to have to scroll down here for a little bit. Down here at the bottom, we're going to expand the domain name query Scroll on down a little bit, and underneath the queried line, we're going to expand that, and we're going to find the domain that was actually queried, which is purdue.com. Step number 15, make a screen capture showing the domain queried in frame 18 and paste it into your lab report file. Step number 16, using the information in frame 18, identify the related frame and then select that frame in the frame summary pane. The related frame is going to be frame number 21. So let's just scroll on down here just a little bit. And here we see frame 21. 
In the Frame Details pane, expand the answer line to view the details of the DNS query response. So let's scroll on down here to the answer for the DNS query response. And here we see the response. The domain name Purdue.com was shown to have the IP address of 208.97.177.124. Step 18. Make a screen capture showing the address details in the related frame and paste that into your lab report file. Step number 19. In the frame summary pane, select frame 20 and expand the authoritative name servers line to identify the details about the DNS records for the domain query. So let's go back up here to frame 20. Let's scroll on down till we come to the authoritative servers. And we see that we find the records that were queried for this particular information about the domain Purdue.com. Step 20. Make a screen capture showing the authoritative name servers in the frame 20 and paste that into your lab report file. Step 21. In the frame summary pane, select frame 285 and identify the destination MAC address. Okay, again, let's go up here to go. I'm going to go to packet and I'm going to type in packet 285. And there's packet 285. And underneath Ethernet 2, we see that the destination MAC address is listed right here. And on the Ethernet 2 line, we also have the destination MAC address listed as well. Step number 22, make a screen capture showing the destination MAC address in frame 285 and paste that into your lab report file. Step number 23, in the frame's detail pane, identify the source port and destination port. Well, down here, underneath the user datagram protocol, we have the source port listed as 33810 and the destination port listed as port 1813. Step 24, make a screen capture showing the source port and destination port in frame 285 and paste that into your lab report file. Step number 25, in the frame detail pane, expand the radius protocol line then expand the attribute value pairs line. Let's scroll on down until we come to the radius protocol line. Go ahead and expand that. And down here at the bottom, we have the attribute value pairs. Let's go ahead and expand that. And there we have the information for the attribute value pairs. Step number 26, make a screen capture showing the attribute value pairs in frame 285 and paste that into your lab report file. And in step number 27, close the Wireshark application. And that concludes part one of our week one lab two assignment using Wireshark and NetWitness Investigator to analyze wireless traffic. We're now ready to move on to part two, analyze wireless traffic with NetWitness Investigator. Step number one, from the target window 02 taskbar, launch the NetWitness Investigator application. Step number one, from the target Windows 02 taskbar, launch the NetWitness Investigator application, and that would be right here. Let's go ahead and make that full screen. In the NetWitness Investigator application, create a new local connection named your name underscore hotspot capture underscore S2, replacing your name with your own name, and then click the new collection to activate it. So let's go up here to collection. From the context menu, let's select a new local connection. And we'll give it a nice user-friendly name. Once we got all that done, just click OK. Find that new connection inside of your collection window and just double click it to activate it. In the collections pane, right click your new collection, then select import packets from the context menu. All right. So there's my new collection. I'll right click. I will now select import packets. So we need to go over here to the C drive. Open that up. Go inside of the ISSA underscore tools folder. Find the hotspot capture PCAP NG file. Double click it and allow it to import. In the collection pane window, just open the new collection. 
packets from the capture file have been analyzed by NetWitness and all of the reports generated by NetWitness are displayed in the right pane. You can use the scroll bar as necessary to view the complete list of reports. Step number five, using the NetWitness investigator categories, locate the information related to DNS sessions in the packet capture file. Let's scroll on down until we come to UDP. So here we have UDP and we have some information about a domain. Open this up. And here we have some records about service type, DNS. And here we have the host name aliases, source IP addresses, destination IP addresses. Step number six, make a screen capture showing the host name alias, the source IP address, and the destination IP address, and the source city fields of the Purdue.com DNS session and paste it into your lab file. So here we have host name aliases. Purdue.com. Let's go ahead and open that up. And there we have the information that we need. In the NetWitness navigation bar, click the Your Name underscore Hotspot Capture underscore S2 link to return to the high level analysis. So let's go click on this link right here and we'll return to our high level analysis. Using the NetWitness investigator categories, locate information related to the source and destination cities in the packet capture. We'll scroll down here until we come to source city and destination city. Make a screen capture showing the source and destination cities and paste it into your lab report file. Step number 10, click the green link next to each city's name to display additional information. So let's go down here to our destination city here. We have two links. And here we can see the additional information gathered about this particular city. Close the Net Witness Investigator window. And that concludes part two of our week one lab two using Wireshark and Net Witness Investigator to analyze wireless traffic. You got questions, you got concerns about anything that was covered in this short video tutorial, please do not hesitate, reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.